Hello and welcome to the Watchmen on the Wall channel. This prophetic word comes from Kim Potter, Dayton, Tennessee, resisting disappointment. Sometimes I watch things happening in our world and it brings great disappointment. I experienced that just this last week. However, I learned a few things about disappointment over the years. Therefore, I knew I couldn't allow it to take hold. Proverbs 13.12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. I've read the scripture many times over the past several years. One year, I lived it to the point that it caused me to fall into a deep, dark place, a place it took me months to crawl out of. Before that, I had a few disappointments, just like everyone else, but this was different. I went through a season. It lasted years. It brought one disappointment after another. It seemed to be never-ending. Hope is defined as what you are waiting for, hoping for, or expecting. That sounds like faith to me. The word sick is defined as weak, sick, and diseased. The word deferred means to be drawn out, to drag on and on, and to postpone completely. The Message Bible says it perfectly. It says, unrelenting disappointment makes the heart sick. That is what I had experienced, unrelenting disappointment. I had gone through a season of attacks that lasted years and seemed never-ending. Simply wouldn't stop. Through it all, I continued to trust God continue to cry out to him and to worship him. That was until the last hit came, the one that seemed to just take me out. You see, it it happened when my brother died. I was so disappointed, I really didn't even know what to do. The next few days were filled with arrangements, a funeral, with grief. Without even realizing it, I had fallen into a dark place. Fighting my way back from that final piece of unrelenting disappointment was so difficult that I never wanted to fight that fight again. These days, when disappointment tries to come, I don't push it aside, I deal with it. I don't allow it to get in my mind or especially in my heart. Disappointment in God, it causes unbelief in his goodness. It restricts his blessing. You simply can't allow disappointment to hang around. I'm not saying it's an easy thing to do by any means. It is very difficult to go through a disappointing season and still, and still believe that you will see the goodness of God in your life but it is possible. Psalm 27 says, I would have lost heart if I had not believed I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. One translation says, I am still confident of this, that I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. The promises of God reveal his heart. What you believe affects your heart, your attitude, your expectation. If you feed yourself on what God hasn't done, It creates a place of offense and unbelief. Don't do that. It is a trick of the enemy. The truth is, God is always good. There may be things we don't understand. Maybe we never will. But it does not change the character of God. In the very midst of disappointment, instead of allowing it to get on the inside of you, feed on the word of God and his faithfulness. A few years back, a friend of mine had cancer. She had only a couple of days to live When I visited her in the hospital, I was devastated. I hadn't told anyone of her diagnosis, although she had fought it for years. I couldn't believe this woman, spirit-filled, full of God, she was dying. I was so disappointed in what I was seeing. I got on the inside of me. It got in. When I left the hospital that day, God told me to get a book by Dodie Osteen, Healed of Cancer, to read it over and over again until it drove out all disappointment and caused faith in his goodness and his healing to be reestablished in my heart. That's what we must do when we are disappointed. Whatever the disappointment is, find scriptures that declare God's will in the situation. Meditate on those. Feed on those. Eat of them until the word of God is bigger than the disappointment. Will it change the outcome? Perhaps not. But it will change your perspective of God and his faithfulness. And that is what the enemy is after. Unrelenting disappointment makes the heart sick. Today, if you are heart sick, feed on God's word. Dwell on his faithfulness. Ask him to heal and restore your heart. He will do it. I know, because he did it for me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, God, that we have been given the power to resist disappointment. Holy Spirit, we feel heart sick. Many of us feel heartsick when we look at our families, when we look at our communities, God, when we look at the nations. But Lord, 
we choose a better hope. We choose to have faith in you, to place it in you, God. Not to expect weakness and disease in the future, God. But to know that your timing is perfect. That one day we will look back, God, and it will all make sense. We'll praise you. We'll worship you, God. And today as an act of faith, we worship you. We thank you, God, for the testimony on the other side of this drawn-out disappointment. Lord, we know that you have a testimony for us. We thank you, God, that in Jesus' name, we will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. That, that decree is how we resist disappointment. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.